Welcome to the Fit Girl Magic Podcast. If you are ready to find your inner magic, develop great habits, and a rock steady mindset to feel confident, comfortable, and fit in your body, you are in the right place. I am Kim Barnes Jefferson, and I'll be giving you weekly doses of health, fitness, and life tips sprinkled with humor and real talk. If you're ready to be consistent without the stress of perfection, magic makers, it's time to slip into your favorite pair of PJs, grab some coffee, kick back, and listen to today's show. This week's iTunes review is brought to you by Jackie O. Jazzhands. She writes a great, funny podcast about real topics we all struggle with. Kim gives great advice and support to people to live their best life. Ah, that just fills my heart. Thank you so much for taking the time to write me that five-star review. And for those of you who have yet to leave that five-star review, all you have to do is go on to iTunes or wherever ever you listen to this podcast and do the same thing and I will read it on the air. So thank you so much, Jackie O Jazz Hands. It fills me up when I get read those reviews from the heart. Enjoy the podcast. Hey Magic Makers, it's Kim here and I just want to welcome you. Uh, And today it's a topic this is um, near and dear to my heart, right? You know, um, on a prior episode, I talked about the four pillars of health and, you know, in order for us to really be that healthy person that we aspire to be, you know, these four pieces have to be in place. Nutrition, your mindset, your habits, and your exercise, right? And so today I'm going to say, how do we reset that? How do we start to think about these um, and start to make decisions so that we can say what's working, what's not working, what piece of this, you know, four part puzzle is, um, isn't, isn't firing on all cylinders. So then we can start to apply the small changes to improve our overall health. Right. So that sounds easy. Well, it should be right. You know, so many of us find a way to overcomplicate it, right? We find a way to overthink the bejesus out of health and fitness. And, you know, I will say that, you know, the health and fitness industry, we're guilty of it. We're so guilty of it, especially this time of year. You're going to see a lot of different advertisements out there that you need to stop eating this or start eating this or find this superfood or do this, do that. And you could, you know, bat around like a flipping ping pong ball. I totally get it. And what I'm here to do is during this conversation, you know, I want to make getting healthy and fit as simple, as easy as going to sleep at night, right? You guys close your eyes, you go to bed, boom. Now I know some of you are like, girlfriend, sleep ain't that easy for me sometimes. I get it. I totally hear that. We're going to talk about that later in this, uh, in this show. So, you know, here it is. And, you know, I try so hard not to date these episodes, but here we are in December, right? And we're December of 2020. And It's been one, you know, insert your expletive of a year. And here is where I feel like many of us get reflective because we all start to think about like what happened last year? Whoa, (laughs) what's going to happen in 2021 and what's going to happen and beyond? And so I think here's the perfect opportunity to start to look at like what I call my Frit Girl Magic Framework and start to say like, how can I apply this to all of the four pillars of health, you know, my, my my mindset, my nutrition, my habits, my exercise, all right? So let's dive in. So all roads lead to nutrition, right? We have to fuel our bodies, you know, and I've, I've said this quote, and I'll probably say this quote to the day I die. Uh, Jack Elaine, the, the father of modern fitness, he says it perfectly. Nutrition is queen and exercise is king. While so many of us want to flip the script and like work so hard and, you know, get all sweaty and be like, that's the, that's the stuff. That's what's going to get me my results. Sadly, no, right. That's not, that's not what's going to happen. We need to focus on fueling our bodies and it's not about remove this food group, have that super food. It's not about that. It's really starting to say, you know, how do I, what foods work best for me? And in order to do that, 
I know it's annoying. You have to journal, right? You have to write down what foods feel good, right? So that when you, so that when you feel bloated, you're like, ah, what was it that I had that made me bloated, right? And then you can look at the jog and you're like, whenever I have whatever food it is, right? Versus someone told you to, you know, blindly remove dairy or blindly remove gluten or anything like that. I want you to see, does it affect your body the way they tell you it is versus blindly following, right? Because ask the questions, what has restrictive dieting done for you in the past, currently? What's it going to do for you in the future? You know, I... um I have a friend and she's like, she's like paleo for life. And the one thing that paleo does for me, it makes me, um, whenever I like restrict certain things, I binge like nobody's business. I become a hungry, hungry hippo. And I've learned that, right? So I want you to learn that about yourself so that I know that when I restrict myself, like ridiculously restrict myself, it's setting me up to become a binger on the other side. And If you're done with that lifestyle, keep listening. Because right when I work with clients, it's about how do we find that harmony, right? That balance point, that tipping point between what's going to set you off the rails and what's going to set you up for success. That's where that's where I look for. That's what I feel is the best way, the best life, right? You know. How many of you want to like fear going out to dinner or don't date or, you know, always feel like you have to eat before you go, right? I I live that life and that life sucks, sucks big time. So let's focus on adding healthy nutrition, nutrition, oh my gosh, nutritionally dense food. That was a tongue twister, huh? So that we focus on, like I said, the balance, not the perfection. And I know so many of you are that are here. And all it takes is like one, you know, bite of a chocolate chip cookie. And you're like, release the hounds. I'll start on Monday. No, you had that chocolate chip cookie. Boom. It happened. Hopefully it was delicious. And now you're moving on. You know, it's, it's been there, done that next, right? It's when we start to keep dwelling on our past mistakes, that that's where, what's going to trip you up. And if you're someone who continually falls into that trap, please stop. We all mess up, right? I think about it like a flat tire. You're driving along the road and you get a flat tire. Do you like set your car on fire because you got a flat tire? Or do you like, hey, AAA, I'm on the side of the road. Help a sister out. You know, that's what we mostly do. We're like, hey, help us out. Like I I, I fell, you know, or that um, that old school commercial, uh, old lady falls and she like, you know, pulls, I think it's her life alert. If, I, if I'm wrong, correct me. And she's like, help, I've fallen, I can't get up. That's you, right? You had the chocolate chip cookie, you've fallen, you can't get up, but you can. You can just write yourself and move on. Next meal is what 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 it is, what it is, right? And you have to grocery shop, you know? And here's the beauty. In this day and age, grocery shopping isn't you driving to your local market and pushing your cart up and down the aisles, Right. Nowadays, there are a myriad of ways to get groceries in your house. They can, you know, you can shop online and they actually deliver it to you at a specific schedule time. You could go there, you could shop and actually go there, pick it up and they'll put it in your damn car, right? So there's so many ways for you to get food into your house. And the biggest thing I can always say is when you have healthy food on hand, you're less likely to be like, screw it, we're ordering pizza you're more likely to be like, hey, we have something in the fridge, right? And there's also so many other um, healthy, you know, meal prep companies or, you know, the, uh, I don't know what you would describe the, like the Hello Freshers of the world. I can't, I, if you can tell me what they're called, I can't think of it off the top of my head right now, but th- there's so many ways to get healthy food into your house that doesn't require you to actually leave or head into a grocery store if that's, if that's not your jam. So, you know, nutrition is that, that, that pillar, but if you're firing on all the sellers on that, on nutrition, okay, let's talk exercise, right? This is another place where um, I ask people to rethink their exercise, you know, I know I was guilty of this back in the day. If I didn't have a two hour workout, why work out, right? And it was either I could work out for two hours or I didn't. And I think many of you might still fall into that bucket. And so here's how I was able to break that. 
I had to start saying this or nothing, right? And nothing never got me where I wanted to go. That nothing always made me feel guilty, right? I, I was like running a guilt farm in my brain. So I had to say, all right, I only have 15 minutes. So I'm going to make the most of this 15 minutes. And sometimes that 15 minutes is just exactly what I needed to like get out of a funk or just to like move my body. And the second thing that I, I, you know, research also shows this is that I had to rethink movement, right? Acts of daily living. And it wasn't really until um, the pandemic and they told everyone out of the pool that I realized how much I actually moved versus when I was told to stay my booty at home, how much I didn't move. And I was on average, you know, getting 15,000 plus steps a day. And when I had to stay my booty home, I was getting less than five. So. 5,000, not five steps. I wasn't being a sloth. Although, you know, it sometimes it kind of felt like you could be a sloth during those uh, early days of the pandemic. So rethink what that is. And so, and one of the big things I, I challenge my clients is that, you know, at minimum, can you find three spots in your, your schedule to do a 15 to 30 minute workout, right? Bare minimum. Then what about movement? right? Can we find time in your day for 7,500 to to 10,000 steps? And what has been found is that it's called NEAT, right? Non-exercise activity thermogenesis, right? That's fancy talk for walking or just acts of daily living. It could be gardening, right? My grandmother's 99 years old. She don't walk, she gardens, right? That's her act of daily living. Like, you know, try to keep that girl out of the garden you might as well just, you know, shackle her to her bed, right? She gets up and she gardens. She does something in the garden every single day. That makes her happy and that gets her moving, right? So I want you to think about movement. So movement doesn't have to be, you know, flipping tires and all that other stuff. You actually, the research has found you actually burn more calories then focus exercise by acts of daily living. So that could be anything. So getting in those steps nowadays, any many of us have, you know, a whole mirage of ways we can track our steps, you know, be it our phones, our Fitbits, Apple watches, uh, Google makes a watch, I believe anything, you know, there's plenty of ways for you to track your movement. And so I challenge you to get in those 7,500 to 10,000 steps. And that's a major piece of a challenge that, that I'm running. I call it lean and sexy after 40. And one of the biggest pieces is exercise and movement, right? How do we marry those two together so that we we break up with this, you know, I have to like crush it and hit a PR every time I go to the gym, right? Because exercise is what I, I challenge my clients. Exercise is what I call work on your reps, right? What is realistic for you right now? Maybe you do have the time to go for an hour cl- uh, hour long class. Great, rock on with your bad self. But that doesn't make it better than if someone only has 15 minutes and they, in that 15 minutes, they could totally crush it, right? Are you excited about it? You know, if you are not excited about whatever class it is that you're going to or whatever workout you're about to do, then you're not, it's, you're not gonna sustain it right? Because ultimately it has to be sustainable. Something that you could see yourself doing for the next, you know, three plus years, right? And then, you know, can you make a plan for around your life? If, you know, I have a client, she is a um, accountant, right? So right now things are starting to ramp up a little bit in the accounting world, right? The end of the year, closing books, all that other stuff. So maybe in, you know, uh, July, she could go to an hour long class or an hour long workout. But now as, you know, her days start to get a little busier, she's going to focus more on I'm getting in three days a week and I'm moving my body for 15 minutes. And that 15 minutes is might look different every day based on, you know, they work really long, crazy hours, right? And so some of you might have that that kind of job. You know, maybe you are um, a nurse and, you know, you're working, you know, uh, some of my, some of my nurse clients, they work 12 hour shifts and maybe you picked up an extra shift to make a little extra money for the holidays or whatever. So now what was a 12 hour shift? Maybe you flipped it into an 18 hour shift. So you're like, I've been on my feet. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. 
but you're going to find something to do. Now talk about acts of daily living. You're like up and down and all around all the time, right? So it's it's that extra 15 minutes that's going to be like the boost that like Zaza Zoo to help you towards your goals, right? Other, can you find an accountability buddy? You know, I have a good friend I, that we text each other. All right, what are you doing this week? Uh, you know, it's like, okay, I'm working out Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday this week. Great. I'm going to get a text at some point on Monday. What'd you do? I'm going to get a text on Wednesday. What'd you do? Right. And the same thing is going to happen to her. And that way we're holding each other accountable because, and you have to pick someone who's going to hold your feet to the fire. Cause I'm fortunate that my friend, if I said, well, I was tired, she's going to be like, so what are you going to do tomorrow then? You know, so it's going to be that. So you need to find someone who's going to be that for you. And so if you need that person, I can be that person for you. So just holla at your girl. All right. Moving on. I think I have beat this into a bloody pulp, right? So the other piece here, we have to get into the habit of sleep, right? One of the habits that I see a lot of people is that we'll skimp on sleep. And now I get it. If you are a mama and you know you have a kid that's like not sleeping through the night and you're just like, girl, I am praying for this baby to go down and just sleep through the night. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. What I'm asking is for those of you who have the ability to sleep through the night, right? And this also applies to the mamas. Like, I want you to say, like, are there certain habits that we could start to try to do so that it settles both baby as well as you down? And so that we have kind of a process so that we can go through and see what are some of the toggles we need to pull in order to get our little nuggets down. And then for us to be able to get back to sleep in a more timely manner when our little nuggets wake us up during the day, right? So for me, I always say you have to set yourself up for success. And so as I was talking about children, ch- children have a process. Like there's, ne- there's um, you know, bath time, then there's, a, you know, X number of stories, and then, you know, certain stuffed animals are set up around the bed and all this other magical stuff, right? So think about that for you as a person. Are you setting the tone for sleep, right? Or are you like, oh, I'm going to lay on the couch until I fall asleep, right? Or is there a hard deck, you know, like set a flipping bedtime. I my, I set a bedtime, like my goal is that I, between 9 and 9.30, I'm wrapping up whatever the hell I'm doing, right? So it's like if I'm like cleaning up uh, dinner dishes or, you know, I will also like be following up with clients at night, you know, whatever I'm doing by 9.30, I'm like, Cook, shut off done. And then I'm starting to like go upstairs. I'm washing my face. I'm brushing my teeth. Then I'm meditating. I'm reading and then lights out 1030. Right. So like I give myself an hour to like, you know, unwind versus like laying on the couch until I I pass out and like I wake up and like, you know, the TV is still going and the remote's falling on the floor. And that's what woke me up. Right. Start to think about how do you position yourself for sleep? Um, make it a priority that you are like, this is my bedtime, right? Um, the other piece is, you know, maybe you're like, I tr- I've tried all that girl and I, I just can't. So maybe you need a little some accoutrement, right? To set the mood, you know, it could be diffusing some lavender, you know, maybe you're needing to like, I have, I use what I call like a sleep spray. So it has like a little melatonin. All right. I'm going to say this word and I always blow it. Um, valerian. Oh, I said it right the first time. Valerian root. Um, So it just helps to like um, lull me into sleep. Some of the other things that I've used is CBD oil um, at night. So, you know, think about those things. If you have tried the like, you know, set bedtime route and it's not working for you. Now I'm about to say something that I know is not sexy, right? You know, and I know this is maybe, maybe like six years ago, if you said this to me, I would have, I would have easily tried hard not to roll my eyes at you. Um, But mindset, right? It's, it's, it's totally not sexy, but it's a stumbling block for many of us um, because it's changed my journey, right? It, the, me shifting my mindset has changed my journey because I didn't realize until I started to actively work on this, that I had a fixed mindset. Like I thought that things were the way they were. Right. And for me, you know, when I turned 40, my body gave me the finger and, you know, I pulled out my old tricks and I was spending two hours at the gym. I was like 
removing the carbs. I was removing all the things and my body kept putting on the weight, putting on the weight, putting on the weight. Now, had I not shifted my mindset, I would still be on that God damn hamster wheel. But instead I had to start opening up. I had to start thinking differently, right? I had the courage to say, you know what? There's something else out there, right? There, there has to be something different. And one of the ways I started to open up my mind was journaling, right? Now I know many of you are like, oh, journaling. Yes, yeah, so that was me too. I was like, dude, I am not a dear diary girl. Like, dear diary, I was waiting by my locker and then he walked by. No, right? So for me, journaling was more about all the crazy that was in my head and I was writing on a piece of paper. And when I first started, it wasn't fluid. It wasn't easy. It, it was a, ch- a challenge for me. Like, so at the time, um, the coach I was working with, um, I actually interviewed her earlier on the podcast, all about mindset. We sat down and she's like, Kim, set a timer for five minutes and just sit down. Even if you say, you know, um, Jennifer's making me do this. I can't stand Jennifer. Why am I doing this? Well, I did write that. True story. So I did write that. And then eventually it just became something that I did. The other thing I found was it's called the, there's two journals that I use that kind of, that have prompts. It's called the five minute journal. And in it, it's like, you know, three things you're grateful for, you know, what went well today, that sort of thing. So to kind of help guide you. And the same thing with the I am journal does the same thing. And I'll put the show, I'll put the link in the show notes. um, So you, you can see them, but you know, I journal pretty much every morning I sit down, sometimes it's five minutes. Sometimes it's, I got stuff coming on me. Right. Uh, But I always ask myself, what do I need to know today? And sometimes I don't need to know anything. (laughs) Sometimes I need to know something, or sometimes I will hear something that'll make me kind of think on it. Um, If you follow me on Instagram, Kim Jefferson coach every day, I do a daily thought. And usually that's something that I've I've journaled on um, or that popped up when I was journaling. Um, and you know, I keep it short and simple. I don't, I don't feel like I'm one of those people like I can't get up until I fill five pages. No, screw that. I just sit down, whatever comes out, comes out. Um, it's, I journal literally everywhere. You know, I've, I've, I bring my journal with me on vacation, business trips, the whole bit. So it's become, you know, just something that I do. Um, a lot of times I'll have to journal and then go for a walk just to like move my energy, which brings me into our um, our last thing is, is, or one of my last things is self-care, right? I've done two, two shows so far on self-care. And for me, the, your mindset is what sets you up for self-care, right? Your mindset is what's going to help you to really kind of like chill the F out. And I think so many of us get caught up in the busy of life and I get it, right? You know, you've got kids, you're homeschooling them. You know, one day you're homeschooling them, one day they're going to school, then one day you're working from home. Then there's like, you know, talk about going back to the office. Like there's a lot of stuff going on right now and everyone's home and you can't really go anywhere. But sometimes it's just finding that time by yourself, right? For me, journaling is my self-care. It's my like 15 minutes by myself. Um, you know, it's, it could be a bath for you. It could be reading. Um, it could be watching a Hallmark movie, you know, whatever hobby that you have, you know, I have a client, she is like knitting is her jam, right? So God knows she's probably knitted a house by now with all of the stress that we might all be feeling that this year has been given us. There are no rules, just do whatever feels good. And, you know, to quote my last guest, um, Emily Nichols, self-care isn't selfish, right? It's, um, what they say on the airplane, it's putting your oxygen mask on so that you can serve and help other people. And, you know, in that episode, she, um, Emily, as well as Deanna Strober, they both talked about like how they're better moms when they're able to take like five minutes of me time, right? So if you are struggling with that, there's two episodes, again, I'll link them in the show notes that you just have a conversation, like use that as a, 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 a jumping off point. Yeah, that's a good word. A jumping off point for for that. Um, and then lastly, you know, as I start to kind of land the plane here, what are your goals, right? Here's where I think a lot of us get stuck. We don't reconnect with what our goals are, right? We're, you know, we're working so hard, but what are you working for? You know, what is that ideal outcome for you, right? And as I think about what my ideal outcome, like what are some of 
well, let's rewind. What are my ideal outcomes? Am I still interested in that, right? Does that still like light me up? Am I still excited about that? And then what are some of the limiting factors? Like what's holding me back from that? You know, is it a physical thing? You know, is it, yeah, is it a physical thing or is it something I've created in my mind? And then based on the things we've talked about today, like nutrition, mindset, habits, exercise, where do I need to focus my attention? Like, and when I say that, it's like, what feels challenging, but can be, but can be, uh, can be reached if I did sustained effort, right? So I'm not saying, oh, I want to climb Mount Everest and what's up, sustained effort. I'm, I'm saying like, you know, if it's your nutrition and we talked about the grocery store and you're like, yeah, I'm not doing a good job of going to the grocery store. Could you focus on that? And could you start to say, you know, when I go to the grocery store, that's, that, that's going to be a good tipping point for me. That's going to be a jumping off point that'll turn into other things, right? So where do you need to focus? And how do you feel about, you know, the plan you've laid out for yourself, right? Because what I love to do with clients is create a repeatable process, right? So that, you know, we all are seeking that, but instead of doing it on someone else's terms, we're creating it on our terms, right? And when you create it on your terms, it's realistic, you're excited about it, it, and it's sustainable. And at the end of the day, when you have sustainability, you have results. And that's what we're all seeking at the end of the day. And it's just, we all are going to reach it at different roads. Like, um, think about GPS, right? We could punch in GPS and Google's going to tell me something. Um, Waze is going to tell me something else. My car navigation is going to tell me something else. And I can't think of another map company that's going to tell me something else. And there might be small variances between what they all tell me, the roots they all tell me, but I'm ultimately going to get there maybe within five minutes of each other, right? So that's where I want you to start thinking about that because, you know, your thoughts and feelings affect your behavior and ultimately your behavior affects your choices. And when you make, um, when you start to make, you know, more informed choices, then you can get clear on what the outcome is going to be. You can connect to that goal. You can connect to that outcome so that you're not relying on discipline and willpower and motivation. And you're, you have the courage to, you know, stick with it for the long haul, because here's the thing, right? None of us are, you know, are come out advanced, right? We all have to be a beginner at something at some point. And then it's like, when we get to that messy middle, that's when things get like, Oh, can I? Oh, it's getting hard. It's getting uncomfortable. I don't know. Can I continue? That's where you have to push through to the other side so that you can get that consistency. And ultimately you get those, ultimately you get that result. So I'm going to, I'm going to end this with one story and then um, I'll let you, I'll get out of your ears. So um, I think it was maybe about a couple weeks ago, Tyler Perry, you know, him, actor, producer, just all around, you know, Hollywood guy. He um, was building a new well and the contractor was out there for like days digging. And he's like, yeah, he's like the, the surveyor says it's, you know, it's, it's here. It's, it's when it's in this, you know, 20 feet and he's digging, he's digging, he's digging. And Tyler's just like, all right, when's this going to be over? Come on. When's this like, you've been in my damn house for X number of weeks, blah, blah, blah. So the contractor came in and he said, look, I know I've been, um, I've been here a long time. I, I don't know, you know, the survey told me this is where it is. I, I haven't found it yet. I, you know, I apologize. It's not where, it, know where it to be. I might need to just start all over again and resurvey to find you a well. So Tyler's like, well, you know, you're already here. You're already set up. Why don't you just like, you know, dig a little bit and see what happens? Well, he dug and like literally he was 50 feet from water. So the moral of the story is many of us, we start a goal. It gets hard. It gets to that messy part that you just start to feel uncomfortable have the courage to push through because the breakthrough is typically within inches of your breakdown. All right. So I'd love to hear how any of you guys feel about this. Um, do me a favor and uh, hit me up on the socials. If there's someone who needs to hear this, 
screenshot it, tag them, tag me, and let's make sure that we stay in touch because here's the thing, you know, your goals aren't ever going to go away. So we might as well face them head on and work together to see how we can make them work for each other. All right. Have a fabulous day. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to the Fit Girl Magic Podcast. If you've made it this far, yay. I'm thinking you enjoyed the show. Let's continue the conversation on Instagram. You can find me at Kim Jefferson Coach. In order for me to keep sharing this message, do me a favor and leave me a five-star review on iTunes. While you're there, don't forget to subscribe so that you won't miss an episode. New episodes are available every Wednesday. The Fit Girl Magic Podcast is intended to provide you with tips, tools, and strategies that will help you make better decisions about your health. I really appreciate your feedback and your support. Thank you so much.